Hi everyone, my name is Jesse Robbins, and welcome to LPLE from Dialogue FM. We're the podcast that lets you practice listening in English. We speak English slowly and clearly, so that you can follow along and understand native English speakers more easily. I'm excited to help you improve your English listening skill, as well as help you learn new vocabulary, grammar, and idioms commonly heard in conversations among native English speakers. If you want to practice listening in English, then we invite you to join our conversation. Hi, Jane. Hi, Jesse and Vincent. God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for everyone, oh, great time, great timing, child. For everyone who's listening,、uh, we have a special guest today on. Uh, this episode of LPLE. It's my four-month-old son, Vincent.、Uh, you might have heard in a previous episode that I recently became a father, and、uh, I had to take a bit of a break from recording、uh, to make time to take care of my son. Now that my wife is back at work, I'm back to recording and taking care of. Um, a rapidly growing child. He certainly is growing. I saw him about three months ago, and he was tiny compared to the way he is now. Yeah, it's when people see him, they're always、uh, always surprised、uh, to find out that he is only four months old.、Um, apparently. He looks bigger, <laughs> bigger and very alert. Yes, and his facial features are quite distinct. Right, right.、Yes. Especially his eyebrows. He, I know. <laughs> he likes to communicate with his eyebrows. <laughs> he has his father's eyebrows. Yep. I haven't seen you in a long time. Six, seven weeks, I think. At How least. How was your trip? It was fantastic. Thank you.、Um, a, a quick.、Um, Reminder again uh, uh, from previous episodes.、Uh, you heard me talk about an upcoming trip to、uh, Japan and Vietnam. My wife and I decided that after the baby was born, that we would take a total of five weeks in Asia. Three weeks in Japan and two weeks in Vietnam. Of course, the first question people would ask is, "Wait, are you taking the baby?" Right. Yes. Sense, right? And then the second question they would ask after they would learn that yes, we are taking the baby is, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> well, I've been wondering how did it go. Traveling with this baby, Vincent, in in particular, was actually really easy. Really, I'm surprised, right?、Um, the、uh, sorry, did you hear that?、Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's an adult sound. Hopefully, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> I know it wasn't you, but <laughs> if, if that if it didn't come through, I'm going to leave this in the recording.、Um, For everyone who's listening to this episode,、uh, my child is making、um, funny and embarrassing noises. We'll <laughs> leave it at that.、Um, traveling with Vincent was really easy. On the plane, he did very well. He did not cry a lot. Maybe half an hour total total、wow. time. And that's a long flight. That yeah, we flew from Seattle to San Francisco, from San Francisco to Tokyo, and then we flew and took the train all over country. The country, yeah. We traveled to ten cities in twenty-one days. So, wow. Yeah. So the math is about two days per city. That's right. Right. Yeah. On average.、Um, And then from Japan, we flew to Ho Chi Minh City.、Um, 
uh, our final destination. And then on the way back, we took the, the flight from Ho Chi Minh City to Tokyo, Tokyo to San Francisco, San Francisco to Seattle. Wow. Yeah. And again... Is that about 24 hours total? To- more, I would think. Mm. Yeah. Um, and honestly... He did so well. He behaved very well. (laughs) He uh, he would cry when he's hungry. Sure. And when he needed to have his diaper changed. That's it. Um, I have so many stories. I I want to share with you. To hear them. Um, where do we begin? What What are you interested in? I'm. I guess my first reason is what made you choose Japan now? I know that you know Japan, but what made you decide this was a good time to go? I understand Vietnam would have a lot to do with your wife's family and so on. But why Japan? Why now? My wife has never been to Japan. Ah. She's always wanted to go. Always wanted to go. However, she never had the chance, and furthermore, she uh, she doesn't speak Japanese. So right. It's a little bit difficult for her to travel the country. Another problem is the train system in Japan is very complicated for her. It, the, the train system is very complicated, so if she can't communicate in Japanese... And if the if the transportation system is very complicated, she just won't go. Ah, oh, right. So yeah. with you there, I'm her in- handy interpreter. Yes, okay. um, and you've been at least a few times, oh, haven't yeah. you? That uh, this was my fifth time uh-huh. traveling to Japan. Now, for me, I was excited about this trip also because. I've never been to other cities outside of Tokyo. Oh my goodness. Right. So it was also a good opportunity for me to explore the rest of the country. I have friends living in other cities outside of Tokyo. I have friends in Nagoya, I have friends in Osaka, I have friends in Kobe, and I have friends in Fukuoka. So this was a good opportunity a good excuse for me to see them. Right? Yes. Um, when most people go to Japan, most people usually only stay in Tokyo. Maybe they might go to Osaka. Or Kyoto, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Right? Mm. Um, we, and specifically I, was really uh, ambitious with our travel itinerary. We rode the bullet train a lot. Oh, it was so nice. So, so <laughs> I've nice. heard they're yeah. fantastic. They are. And it makes me wish that we had a similar train system in America. I've heard yeah. that Japan's system is one of the best in the world. It is. Uh, there are good fast trains, you know, bullet train types right. in Europe. But we have nothing here, really. Right. right. So, yep, that was the reason for Japan. All right. Yeah. So, you actually visited friends in each of those places, is that right? Uh, most of them. And in, in certain cities like uh, Kyoto um, and Hiroshima, I did, I did not have any friends. There. Yes. Um, so, I was your basic tourist. So, Hiroshima, were you there? You were there almost around the time of the anniversary, right? Of the... Yes, Bomb. that's that's very true. Um, I did not witness uh, any particular um, uh, memorial mm. events. Mm. Um, maybe I might have missed it by a day or even a week. Um, nevertheless, I'm so glad I went to Hiroshima. Uh, I, I think that... 
the visit to Hiroshima was probably the most memorable experience I have had in Japan.、Hmm. Now, I've seen a lot of great things in Japan、um, a lot of beautiful temples, a lot of amazing performances. However, going to Hiroshima and seeing the memorials for the, for the atomic bomb. Yeah.、Um, the dedications to the, the lives lost. I cried. I absolutely cried. I'm、um, crying just listening.、Yeah. And, and my baby's crying too. <laughs> Let me tell you that I was moved.、Um, the memorial that really hurt the most.、Um, Was the, the one about、uh, the kids that was the most painful?、Mm. Um, I, mean, I, I can get into,、uh, I can explain all of the other beautiful memorials at Hiroshima.、Um, um, if we did that, I think we would spend an hour crying. I remember、um, the, the, the memorial for、uh, the children's. Um, the children who,、uh, lives who were lost, and I had, yeah, I, I, I broke down crying. I'm glad I went. I needed to see that.、Yeah. I needed to feel again. Now, I'm speaking in very、um, obscure terms. So, I want to take this opportunity to be more specific、uh, about my emotions、um, and what I was thinking when I went to Hiroshima. Jane, you and I talk a lot about politics. We do. And we, we like to talk about it.、Um, I'll speak for myself when I say that over the past few years, at least, and definitely most recently, we read a lot of tragic things. We certainly do. Right? Increasingly. Yeah.、Um, and most recently, our country has been the source of a lot of、um, heartbreak. A lot of、uh, unfortunate news. It got to the point when, where I felt very numb. I lost the feeling,、uh, I lost the ability to feel sadness, I lost the ability to feel sympathy、uh, because I just On a daily basis, every day, would read some bad news. Yeah, I think we've begun protecting ourselves a little bit. Yeah. Yes.、Yeah. When I went to the Peace Park in Hiroshima and I read the various memorials、uh, dedicated to the lives lost. The children's lives lost,、um, uh, those Korean nationals who were living in Japan、um, and, and perished from the atomic bomb. When I read all of these memorials, I started to feel again.、Mm. Um, and I'm happy about that. I'm happy because I'm reminded that I'm human. Yeah.、Um, I'm also reminded. That we still have the risk of nuclear conflict now. Right? We do. It's very scary. That's putting it lightly. To say it's very scary is. Is putting it lightly. Very it's putting it's it lightly. actually un- unimaginable, I think. Right. Well, unimaginable turning into reality. Reality, or at least imaginable.、Right? Yeah. All said. Um, 
during the three weeks in Japan, again, I, just in that time alone, not counting the previous four visits, um, this visit to Japan, I got to go to a rabbit island. I went to, yep. <laughs> went to a rabbit island. Uh, and when I say rabbit island, I mean, it's an island just full of rabbits. Yeah. Why? What for? It, it, that island has a sad history. It, it start talking about the war, um, it was a place... It, the island was previously a military base. Uh. And it was also a place, I believe, that was used for chemical experiments. I see. And when we think of chemical experiments, um, usual, usually rabbits are part I of see. the... Um, uh, the chemical experiments. Yes. When the island was abandoned, all of the rabbits were left there. And rabbits do what rabbits do. <laughs> they quickly <laughs> multiplied. So now, when tourists go to this rabbit island, they're greeted with just rabbits upon rabbits. I took Photos with lots of rabbits. <laughs> is there anywhere for people to sit, or is it all just yeah. sort of give? Okay, so yeah, there... it's a big island, oh, so right. there's plenty of places for uh, tourists to sit down and eat lunch and feed the rabbits. <laughs> uh, so I went to a rabbit island. Uh, I went to a deer park. Um, I went to. Uh, a place, a beautiful um, uh, hot springs resort area. Um, I saw a live comedy performance in Japan. Yeah. Now, was that a um, a more mo what we think of as comedy, sort of stand up comedy, or was it a traditional form? A traditional form. Mm. That's a great question. Um, Japan has a very um, special style of comedy. Uh, that you don't really find elsewhere. Hmm. The America used to have it. America used to have. Um, y do you remember Laurel and Hardy? Oh, sure. The, yeah, in uh, movies, right? In, and vaudeville sort of thing, right? Right. Yeah. And they also had stand-up, right? They also had stand-up routine comedy, right? Um, and skits, right? Well, that kind of two-person comedy is very popular in Japan. Hmm. Yeah. We don't see that kind of comedy in America anymore, right? We see stand-up comedy. Right? Yeah, we see single stand-up usually right. or situation comedies, right, something right. like that. Now, are they in modern dress? Oh, um, yeah. And is it mostly physical comedy or is it uh, verbal as well? Or both, both, primarily verbal. Mm -hmm. Primarily verbal. However, um, there's a standard format. One person has one particular role and the other person has another particular role. Um, similar to Laurel and Hardy. Sort um, of the straight man right, and, and the, the joker. And the kind jo of. Co correct. That's, uh -huh. exactly it. That's the normal format for this kind of comedy in Japan. Uh, so I went to that comedy performance. I, I Again, I saw lots of great things, ate lots of delicious food, um, saw friends. I'll say, time and time again, the trip to Hiroshima was probably the most memori um, yeah, memor memorable. Uh, memorable, thank <laughs> you. Oh, yeah, memorable. Um, the most emotional. Yeah. And uh, I would, I'd love to go back there. Really? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Well, I would love to go there, too. I, it's interesting that really I'm just one generation and you're a generation and a half, two generations, well, a generation and a half or two generations beyond. Right. right. And um, it's interesting how powerful the quote-unquote memories of it are yeah. even even though we weren't even born when it happened. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that I've spoken 
on and off over the years with Germans, for example, who, who were younger, who maybe weren't born for 10, 20, 30 years after the war, and they still have questions about it yeah. and, and something like regret. Um, and I think a lot of Americans, particularly younger, and by that I mean a generation after the war, have similar feelings of regret mm -hmm. and confusion. Yeah. I know that in my parents' generation, which was the generation of, of those who fought in the war, they believed that a great, great many more lives would have been lost in the long run if the bomb had not been dropped. Who knows whether that's true? Right. I think that's one way they managed to live with themselves. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 agree, I agree with your um, assessment mm. that it's a way for Americans in particular to live with themselves, to to justify mm -hmm. using the atomic bomb. And because we'll never know, it's it's easy for them to make that argument. Yeah. I've heard that argument as well. Yeah, oh, sure, yeah. Um, but I think going just as Obama wanted to make sure a president of the United States finally went there. He did it towards the end of his term. I think any American going there wants to pay their respects, and in a sense, it's not an apology, but a recognition yeah. of a wrong. Right. I'm, I'm doing my best to uh, avoid uh, talking about current politics again. Um, <laughs> I, I will say that I did get questions about Donald, President Trump. I did get questions about it. Um, and I politely acknowledged that my position uh, about, uh, about our current political situation. And then I changed the conversation. Why? Because I'm on vacation. And <laughs> I don't want to talk about politics too yes. much. Um, you know, it's, it, it's funny. Before going to Japan, I thought to myself, well, after three weeks, maybe I'm done. Maybe I don't have to go back to Japan for another few years. Uh -uh. And, oh, no way. I was so <laughs> wrong. I'm so... You can't wait to go back, the, right? the longer I was in Japan, the longer I wanted to stay in Japan. Um, I, I want to go back next year. Um, uh, in fact, uh, my business partner here in Seattle, who is also Japanese, mm -hmm. uh, we are currently uh, exploring um, a, a business opportunity in Japan. Um, we're still doing the basic research right now. However, we think that if the research turns out to be positive, then we may start a business that will require us to go back to Japan. That would be an ideal situation. Great idea. Yeah. Now, the question also arises, what will happen to Vincent, right? Because if Tui is working, my wife, if she's working full time, and I have to go to Japan, what do we do? I think I will take him with me. Because he did pretty well on the plane. Now, he's also young. Right. So he could change. Um, I, I just think that it would be really fun to take him with me uh, and, and, and create more memories together traveling yes. abroad and if he gets used to a plane i i know it's true that sometimes it's easier to travel with very young babies than it is with toddlers but if he gets used to it and yeah. just think he'd get japanese that's true and he'd have that language along with along with 
Vietnamese and English, how yeah. fantastic. The only problem right now with him traveling at this age is he gets jet lag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, for, for those listening, uh, jet lag um, is a situation where your mind and body are not adjusted to the local time. Usually it happens when you travel, um, especially to a far away place. Yes. Um, when we came back to Seattle from Vietnam, Vincent had jet lag really bad. <laughs> so you can imagine at 2 a.m., he's wide awake wanting to talk and play and move around and mom and dad just want to sleep so bad. <laughs> um, I took 3,000 photos. Oh my word. Yep. I took 3,000 photos from this trip. <laughs> um, I took over 100 video all on my phone. All on my phone. Yeah. Right. Um, I made sure to upgrade my phone before I, I left. I was going to say, I hope you, you must have I, one heck of a memory I on do. that phone. I do, I do. Um, I'm, it was a good investment <laughs> to upgrade my phone. Um, one, uh, it became one less thing to lose. Cause, because my worry is if I have a separate camera, I will lose it. I've done it before. I've lost a camera before. And it's heartbreaking. You, know? it's like you have so many good photos and then you lose your camera. Furthermore, I have a baby to focus on. So I know that if I have one more piece of technology, I'm going to forget it. I'm yeah. Absolutely. However, my phone, it's big. Um, so it's a lot more difficult for me to lose and forget. Um, so I took wonderful photos, uh, uh, many of, uh, Vincent, um, wearing something cute <laughs> or me ha asking a complete stranger to hold my baby and take a picture with him. Were they happy to do that? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Um, yeah. there were two Japanese women wearing, um, summer yukata, which is traditional Japanese, um, uh, robe. Yes. And, uh, I asked, um, them politely, um, if they could hold my baby and take a picture with him. And they were so happy. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would love to take a picture. And, uh, it was so cute. Um, so lots of happy memories with uh, my son and my wife. Um, and that's just Japan. I mean, we haven't talked about Vietnam, although maybe we can save that for next week. Um, I, I want to share with you the story of um, introducing Vincent to his great grandparents. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. So his great grandparents are in their seventies, is that right? Eighties, maybe. Eighties. Yeah. Great grandparents. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was a very um, touching moment. Um, I took. I'll show you later. Um, but I took some spectacular photos of Vincent uh, being held by his great grandmother. Uh, in, his great grandmother, you can imagine, was just so happy. Yeah. So we'll we'll talk about that in oh another episode. Oh my goodness. Um, I have dozens more stories to to share with you. I will I'm say eager to hear them. Yeah. Now, did yeah. we feel the same about Japan? That she would like to go back sometime mm. soon. Yes, about Japan. Um, I will say that. Part of the reason I was really ambitious with this trip and traveling to 10 cities in 21 days was because I wanted her to think about what city in Japan would she feel comfortable living in. Uh-huh. In English, we say, 
planting the seed. Yes. Right? So I was planting <laughs> exactly. the seed in her mind. I was uh, um, giving her the thought, the idea about living in Japan. Um, she loved Japan. She loves seafood, sushi. Oh, she's so happy about that. So she, we had lots of sushi. Uh, she really liked Japan. Now, there are some cities she liked more than others. Tokyo is way too big for her. Yeah. She's way too busy. However, Fukuoka or Kobe, uh, now those two cities she really liked. Uh huh. Yeah. Good news. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so all said, um, uh, plenty of great stories to share, um, plenty of photos and videos to share with you. Um, I will say, I am back. I am happy to be back in Seattle. Um, I'm also, uh, honestly, I'm I'm happy to be recording with you once again. I it's miss it. It's good to see you. Uh, yes, uh, we. I was thinking there was something going on that I was missing, and yeah. I thought, oh yeah, recording. Indeed. Um, so um, we'll get behind the mic again and do more stories, um, and uh, and and hopefully um, those listening to this will uh, enjoy these stories as well. Um, so with that, Jane, it's so good to see you again. You too, Jesse and, and Vincent. Yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll sound see. asleep now. I think he is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll see you next week. See you next week. Thank you for listening to this episode of LPLE. Let's practice listening in English from Dialogue FM. Subscribe to LPLE on iTunes to hear the latest episodes, or listen to past episodes on our website, Dialogue.fm. That's D I A L O G .fm. If you have questions or comments about English. Or if you would like for us to use a word, grammar, or idiom in our conversation, so you can learn how to use it correctly, we would love to hear from you on Twitter at dialogue.fm or Facebook at facebook.com/dialogue.fm.